Oh, hi, Wiley Dufresne here, MD50 at Alder Restaurants in New York City. Um, talk a little bit about uh, why we opened WD50, what our intention was when we opened WD50. We just celebrated our 10 year anniversary as well as our opening of a new restaurant, Alder Restaurant here in Manhattan. So I opened, I opened WD50 10 years ago. Uh, Aldo, you're sure. You're making, you gotta stop making that noise. All right. Can you do that stuff downstairs? Yes, sir. All right. Is that what you wanted me to say? You're bad. Thank you. Uh, hello, Wiley Dufresne here, WD50 Restaurant and Alder Restaurant here in New York City. I'd like to talk to you today a little bit about uh, about why we opened WD50 and, and sub subsequently why we've opened Alder uh, here here in Manhattan. Uh, obviously, we wanted to open up a restaurant, and serve good food, and take your money. Uh, but uh, we also had some some ulterior ideas uh, in our mind. Um, and I opened up Alder as a place. I mean, I opened up WD50 as a place where I could uh, continue my culinary education. And what do I mean by that? My culinary education. Uh, well, I, I had gone to cooking school. I had worked for some of the world's great chefs, and I had learned how to do all those things that a cook needs to do: roast a chicken, fillet a fish, fry an egg. Grill things, fry, etc., etc., etc. All of those things I learned how to cook, but I hadn't, uh, I hadn't really learned why to cook. I hadn't really learned why I was doing things. So I would do something 99 times, and it would work perfectly. And on the 100th time, it wouldn't. And I didn't, I didn't really know why. I didn't know. I thought I was following the set protocols, you know, the directions, and yet I wasn't getting the result that I had gotten previously. I didn't know why, and. Um, it was actually across the street at 71 Clinton in the, in the late 90s that I began to uh, strike out on my own, develop my own style, and, and I began to ask these questions. Why, why was I doing something the way I had been doing it? Because I didn't really, I didn't understand you know, what, was, what was going on, really. There's a, there's a great irony there that you could go out to dinner in any restaurant, and the great chefs of the world are cooking your dinner, but it, in a way, we don't really know what we're doing. We don't know why we're doing certain things. And that's not to say that we don't make great food, we don't make delicious food, but we don't always know why we do things. And so I begin to ask those questions and I begin to look at some of the more traditional answers. Well, why, why do we do it this way? Well, because it's the way we've always done it. Or because that way works. Or my favorite, well, we do it that way because I told you to do it that way. And all of these are useful uh, Use, useful dictates for a young cook, but as you get older, they're, they're kind of hollow answers. You, you, it's time to roast a chicken. Okay, well, 15 minutes on the legs, one leg, 15 minutes on the other leg, 15 minutes rest up in a 375 degree oven for a chicken that's two and a half to three and a half pounds, yields a perfect bird. Well, well, why? Again, and there, there was no real explanation for why, for what was going on, and so, so I realized that I needed to. Cut, cut. You mind just... so, so as I got older, I began to to need to know and, and, and want to know why. Why are we doing these things? Why are we roasting this chicken that way? And and the the existing answers were somewhat unsatisfactory. So we began to step away and say, well, we need to understand cooking a bit more. And so what? Well, what is cooking? Well, cooking it turns out is a science. It's a little bit of physics, certainly a little bit of biology, and it's a lot of chemistry. All of these things are chemical processes taking place. All the different machinations that go on when you roast and broil and chop and boil, etc., 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 are chemical reactions. But we are, not, we are not really scientists. We are cooks. And so what we realized was that we were going to need to talk to people who had more information on the subject matter. And you know, fortunately, the world is getting smaller and smaller, so there are people out there that we can talk to. And there have been people, uh, commercial food manufacturers, food scientists, etc., that have known for a long time what's going on uh, when we cook. And, in fact, the, the relationship between science and cooking has, has had a long history. And there have been people who have been very curious and eager to understand it. For instance, Clarence Birdseye knew more about frozen food in 1919 than, than we know today. So if we can go back and look at his body of work and all the things that he did and the many patents that he filed and all of the information that he knew 
about frozen foods, then we can learn something about frozen foods. And so we realized we needed to go outside of our industry. That, and it turned out that we were not the only ones. There are chefs all over the world that subsequently at the same time were, is equally curious and interested to find out a little bit more about what was going on. Not, not to get the right answers, because there, there are no right answers. There never will be a right answer. There will never be a way to cook. There's not a, a right way to poach an egg. You might like your egg poached at uh, 64 degrees for an hour and a half, and she might like her egg poached at 72 degrees Celsius for set 45 minutes. And neither one is right or wrong. You get different results as long as you understand the variables. So there'll never be a right or a wrong way to cook, but there will be a more or less informed way to cook. And that's what we're after. We're after more information because ultimately, whoever knows more can make better decisions. And, and what's wonderful about this is, again, is that we're not taking the, the individual style or spontaneity or, 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 or approach out of cooking. What we're doing is we're, we're, we're taking this knowledge and then we're applying our creativity to this newfound knowledge. And it's, it's, it's helping us in leaps and bounds in the last 10 years. We, we've learned more than we knew in the last 10 years prior to that, and 10 years prior to that, we knew more. And about, I'd say about 35, 40 years ago, you're talking about the dark ages, where we really knew nothing as, as professional cooks, chefs, about what was going on. And so, so WD-50 was, one of the reasons we formed WD-50 was to, to begin to have a place where we could continue our culinary education, where we could learn more as, as, as cooks, where the servers could learn more in front of the house, where you diners, if you so choose could learn more about the process that goes on in preparing your foods. And it's been really exciting. And like I said, we've realized that we've had to go outside of our industry, and we've had to develop relationships with other people. And uh, commercial food manufacturers, food scientists, have, have really brought a lot of information to us, new equipment, new technology, new understandings, and some actually very old equipment, old technology, stuff that's been out there for a really long time that just has never been part of our formal education as cooks. So this has been a really uh, exciting time for us at W50, and I feel very fortunate that I've had the opportunity to meet people like Ted Russin, who has helped us really walk our ideas and our knowledge down the road. And so I uh, would like to take this opportunity to introduce Ted so he could talk a little bit about uh, himself and what he's done, and then we'd like to talk about the relationship between the chef and the scientist. So, thank you.